Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. I am standing here today with Kelly Sadoric, who is a rancher and consultant out near Saskatchewan. Um, we're going to be doing a soil school today. We're going to be talking about her journey in rotational grazing and how that's related back to soil health and just the importance of rotating cattle on the landscape to improve the soil. So welcome Kelly, it's fantastic to have you on the show. Oh yes, thanks a lot Amber. So rotational grazing, tell me first a little bit about your history and the ranch's history here. Well, um, a number of years ago, and I don't always want to date myself, but it's actually over 30, um, we transitioned our operation, which had been started by my parents and was an intensive livestock operation. And as uh, myself and my brother were coming uh, along and getting involved, looking at doing some things differently and making some changes, and we learned about holistic management. And one of the pieces of that, of course, is the grazing livestock element. When we were first starting to uh, change the way that we had uh, been doing our grazing, which was pretty much continuous grazing, you know, in the spring, all the uh, cattle went out, you know, have a look at them a couple of times or three uh, during the season, then bring them back again. And so we, of course, always paid close attention to the health of the livestock, their performance. But with um, transitioning into holistic management, we started to look at what was actually going on on the ground with the plants, soil surface, and um, those type of things, and really learn some of the principles about, um, you know, making sure to um, have the ground covered as much as you can. You know, we thought, oh, we don't have any bare ground, but when you actually start looking and monitoring, you will see some bare ground. And um, so we wanted to improve that. We wanted diversity. And we also realized that one of the ways to improve plant health and productivity is to come in do a graze but then leave again so the plants have a chance to recover you know back when we first got involved we weren't really paying much attention to what is going on below ground mm -hmm. but certainly in the last 10 15 years the importance of that and how we can really improve what's going on above ground by being mindful of all the interactions and i mean i just feel like very um beginner level on all of that but you know there's so much that we can do simply with grazing management using that cattle as a tool to help enhance what's going on in the uh, biological activity Underneath. below the soil surface. And so there are a lot of different schools of thought on grazing, on, on all this, but I think a lot of the leaders have come to a conclusion that there's, you know, five soil health principles, right? So can you talk a little bit about that and how important those are to your operation? For sure, for sure. One of the ones in the, you know, in the soil health arena they talk about is integrating livestock. Mm -hmm. Well, that one's easy. We already are, right? right? But then we also want to take, pay attention to, as I said, soil cover, keeping, or soil armor, or whichever uh, terminology you want to use. Uh, a living root, that's part of uh, what we're trying to do as we have healthier plants and they're growing up and they're sending and uh, nutrients below ground and building healthier roots. Um, diversity too, you know, as many species as possible um, because it's so much easier to manage with uh, a number of different plants and their attributes mm -hmm. than just a monoculture. Then another one that's important too, I think is to know your context. And the things that we do um, are gonna be different than what other people do. Uh, even it changes from one year to the next, right. even one season to the next, mm -hmm. because we started out in a, in a quite nice um, soil moisture uh, situation and had really excellent um, pasture and forage growth, but that has the the tables have turned, so to speak, and we're now back into a, a drought situation. So 
I think I've got all those. I didn't count mm -hmm. them as we went along, but did I miss one? No, I think you got them. And the one thing that we were talking about earlier was soil cover versus recover. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because uh, yeah, I was fascinated with what you were saying earlier about it. Well, it was just something, you know, the uh, using the base uh, word as cover and how it, we can just, so many places we look around, whether it's been through our winter feeding strategies with bale grazing or something out on the land where we can get more of a thatch. Admittedly, sometimes we get too much of a thatch, but the idea that anywhere that we can cover the ground, it's going to hold more moisture. Mm -hmm. And as we're talking, you know, it's gotten dry. And if you tour around, well, there's a green spot. Why? Oh, we fed there, you know, right. or whatever it was, you know, maybe it's in a draw. So the moisture is um, running through there. It's quite obvious. But then the other part of it with the grazing approach is that you can come in and graze the plants. Um, and sometimes it might be a severe graze too. It depends on the situation and what's going on and what you're managing for. But then the idea that you get out of there and let the plants recover, regrow, send reserves down to the roots, build okay. deeper roots and all of that I think is important to help with our water holding capacity. Um, I love the analogy of a sponge and uh, thinking that, you know, healthy um, forage grasslands can really just hold so much moisture. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, excellent analogy that I heard uh, a few years ago on a really um, well managed the Hanson Ranch up at Fairview was one of the newcomers to it said, boy, walking on your uh, land is like walking on a pillow top mattress and I thought <laughs> it so truly is you can yeah. feel that uh, cushiony and just know that it can hold more moisture right right um yeah, it's fascinating too, because I think that recover piece even comes in in cropping systems a lot. Like as people are talking about doing, you know, uh, fall rye and trying, like, I, I feel like agriculture as a whole is kind of trying to push towards this recover yes, idea. Yes, yes. Um, we also had the um, good fortune or the situation because of having the uh, feedlot in the early years we've got some pastures that um, had a lot of manure and organic matter on it and in fact one anecdote is that we have one of our um, neighbors who's a grain farmer and they took over a piece of land that we had spread manure on oh. and he says easily 30 years later, he can see a difference in the productivity of that versus some of his other um, fields. And it's mostly because of that organic matter component, which then starts linking with carbon and sequestration. And that's a whole other, uh, <laughs> whole a whole other, other topic. topic. We could go on yes. for a long time yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, so I guess the final question I kind of want to ask is anecdotally, from your experience, once you started focusing on soil health and on a rotational graze and, and really, you know, moving into the more regenerative field, what have you seen happen on your own ranch? Well, certainly, I mean, the diversity, you know, an increase in that. And also, um, you know, just recognizing, I think that it is, um, as we said, it's so context dependent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, there's a lot of variation from one year to the next. And honestly, Amber, some days you think, oh, yeah, we kind of got this figured out. And it's like, <laughs> what? What on earth are we doing there? So uh, the fact of it being a continuous uh, learning journey, um, because we set this up a long time ago, we've got a lot of paddocks and that gives us some flexibility. Even right now, as we were talking earlier, we're running into some water source right. challenges. So we have some flexibility. Um, uh, we also incorporate that with our classes of livestock because we have a cow herd and we also have a yearling herd. And so um, just trying to manage the two of those together and link all those pieces the land and the livestock, the finances and the people. Right. And I think that like, especially that people and economic piece, I think when we talk about soil health, really when it comes down to it, producers need to be able to make a profit. We need to take care of our people and we need to take care of the economics, right? And having healthy soils, that's where it all begins. Yes. Yes. It definitely can, uh, can be a big component of it to help make our, you know, another word that gets used a lot, but resilience, and it truly is. So, I mean, even now, um, 
uh, and I another term I actually like a lot is the amp grazing. Mm-hmm. So adaptive multi paddock because it feels like we're adapting constantly. Right. Um, another thing I should just mention is that we are quite intentional about making a grazing plan ahead of the season. Right. And one of the important pieces of that is um, what kind of recovery period are you wanting for your plants? And honestly, it was so great here in May and June that we were able to quite shorten our recovery period. And then it gets dry and recovery of the plant slows right down, if not stops uh, currently. And so then we just, okay, now that's going to have to that's going to have to have more time to recover. So Mm -hmm. uh, all those different pieces and putting that plan together, even though we never go according exactly to plan, we have that baseline of knowing. Mm -hmm. Is there anywhere uh, producers can go for resources if they're wanting to learn more, if they want to learn more about soil health? Where have you learned and, you know, where can they go? Because you do some consulting. So where can they go to Yes, for sure. I mean, always connect with me. uh, KellySidoric.com. We've been through holistic management, mm-hmm. and so we learned so much through that. But it's just such a fabulous community of like minded people, you know, that are out there um, wanting to do, um, again, amp grazing, intensive, rotational. There's a, a lot of different terms for it, but uh, it is. Uh, and, and again, there's a lot of programs right now, too, that can help, um, you know, because certainly I haven't mentioned it, but one of the key pieces of this for a grazing operation is your water support source. And um, so that can be expensive. Infrastructure can be expensive. Uh, so can fencing. But, I mean, we've adapted where, um, as we were talking earlier, most things in on our operation stay behind a one-wire uh, electric fence. And yeah. uh, that was a paradigm shift a few years ago, but uh, now we don't even think anything of it. So. Right. And yeah, there is funding support. So it was wonderful having you on this episode of Soil School. And that was Kelly Sidoric on Real Agriculture.